This video is going to show you how you can run Poisson regressions in R. We use Poisson regressions with count data when it fits a Poisson distribution, and I'll show you how to test that as part of the video. It's a relatively straightforward process to do, and all the data and code used in this video can be found in the link below, so you can run through it yourself and edit this code so you can run your own models as well. There's a few things that we got, we're going to need. First of all, we need to turn off scientific notation. That just gives us our exact key value. You don't have to do that, but I prefer it that way. There's a few packages I want to use. We're going to use the JTools package, which is, gives some nice model summaries, additional statistics, and it also allows us to get R to make some tables for us automatically, which is quite a neat thing. We're also going to use the AER package, which was going to do our test of dispersion, which is test of assumption of the Poisson regression. And we're just going to use the read Excel package because we're going to use an Excel spreadsheet. So if you haven't installed these ever, then you're going to have to install them now, but you only need to do that once. But we do need to pull them out of the library each time you wish to use them. Here's the data set we're going to use. As I say, this is below. This is called Poisson. This is the location on my computer. Of course, you'll have to change that so it reflects where it is on your computer. So let's just read that in and let's have a look at the data. So it's only a small data set. Um, it's quite a long data set, there's not many variables in it. We've got participant code we can ignore. We've got our participants' age, their sex, in which males are zero and females are one. We've got their love of music, which is, was scored on the visual analog slider with low scores, meaning they don't like music much. So they're into bands like Coldplay and garbage like that. And higher scores mean they like music. So you know, like me, they like country music. And um, number of gigs they have attended in the last year. So that's pretty self-explanatory. So this is a count now. So this is the number of gigs, so it's a count variable, and that's why we're going to model it using a Poisson regression. Because we use Poisson regressions often when we have count data. I'm going to attach this as well. This just makes it a little bit quicker when I'm writing the code. But I'll show you how to write the code if you didn't attach it. First thing we're going to do is just we're going to label our sex variable. So to do that, we just tell our, our data frame that we call PLASDF, PLASDF, and then we say specifically the variable sex is a factor, and then we just tell our PLASDF sex has two levels, zero and one, and we can label these as male and female. So if you run that, you can check our data again, and as you can see, it says male and female instead. So we are now ready to run our Poisson regression. So what we're interested in is the extent to which age, sex, and love of music predict the number of gigs our participants have attended in the last year. Because we're doing this in R, it's really straightforward to do, and we structure it like we would any form of regression. The only major difference is we are fitting a generalized linear model. So we're going to just call this model one. And we type GLM because it's a generalized linear model. Now, the GLM command has lots of different forms of models. We just need to tell it which one. Like all regressions that we do, we simply write our dependent variable or our outcome. So in this case, gigs, tilde, predicted by sex and age and love music. And then our data is the Poisson DF data frame. And then the family is Poisson. And we have the link is log. That's all we need to do to set up a Poisson regression. If I hadn't have used the attach command, what I'd have to do is in each instance here, would just tell our where I am getting these variables from. And that's pretty much it. That is our Poisson regression all set up. So we can run that. And then we can ask for a summary. 
which is the same as everything, summary model one. So this is our Poisson output. I'm not going to go through loads of this stuff in great detail, but you'll be familiar with this if you've ever run regressions. The first thing I'm actually going to do is test dispersion in the data. Okay. So dispersion is one of the assumptions um, whether we have what we call equidispersion. We expect the dispersion parameter to be about one in a Poisson regression. We work this out, it is simply the ratio of our residual deviance to the degrees of freedom in our model. So essentially, if we divide our residual deviance by our degrees of freedom, we want it to be about one. Essentially, we don't want it to be above 1.1, which would be over dispersed, or under 0 0.9, which would be under dispersed. There's a couple of ways we can actually test this. So as I say, we could, in a really straightforward way, say, well, let's see what this ratio is. So we just take from down here to 77.58, and we can divide that by 253. If you run that, here's our testing and dispersion. And there you can see we're just all right. It's just under 1.1. So we're probably OK with our pass on regression here. You, you may want to see if a negative binomial regression is more suitable, and I'll come on to doing things like that in later videos, but we're okay with our Poisson regression here. Of course, we could test it in another way, and that's where we, we use the AER package that I talked about earlier. So this is sort of a um, null hypothesis significance test of dispersion. So we asked for a dispersion test, model one, TRAFO equals one. And this will actually formally test it for us. And we've got our non significant p value. So this is good. So we're not over dispersed in this case. So we're good news for us here. So we can actually test if we are over dispersed using this test. We know from our testing dispersion that we are okay with our analysis, that we um, can trust our data. We do have the Poisson distribution or a near approximation to it. So let's just go back to our summary again. So what we've got here is all the regression coefficients, but we haven't actually got a overall model fit statistic. Now there's two ways that we can produce this. We could do it ourselves using base, just logic, or we can use the JTools package. I'm gonna show you the logical way that we can do it. Basically, what a overall model fit is, is basically saying, when we have predictors, is it better than our null model? So we've got a model with predictors, but we could also do a null model. So what would the model with no predictors look like? Well, it's going to look exactly like that. We're gonna call it model null, generalized linear model, gigs, tilde, and then one. We've got no predictors in there. Then everything else is the same, same data set, and the family is Poisson. And the link is log, and then we can run that. We don't want to look at the output of that, it's not going to give us anything to interest in. Particularly, what we are interested in is whether model one is a better fit than the null model. So to do that, we type ANOVA, so analysis of variance, and then we type model null from a model one and then the test and there is a chi-squared test we use a chi-squared test to see if one model is better than the other so this is going to tell us if our model one is better than our null model and we click run and here we go here's our chi-squared test statistic and our p-value for it, and that's the degrees of freedom for the difference. The degrees of freedom difference is three, because we've got three predictors in the model. So as you can see, that our model with predictors, our hypothesized model, is a significantly better fit than the null model. And we've got our chi-squared statistic, degrees of freedom, and our p-value for that as well. Now, we can also 
get this produced automatically for us. Because JTools has this command sum double M. And we just ask for model one. Now the default of this command is two digits, and I don't particularly like that, so I've changed digits equals three. Let's run that. And here we go. We've got our model fit, so chi squared, degrees of freedom is three. And there we go. Here is our chi squared statistic, and you'll see it's the same as that chi squared statistic, and there's our p value as well. So does exactly the same thing, but this is sort of to make the process. You don't have to write your null model up. But I think having that knowledge is quite useful to know actually what this command is actually doing. You'll also see it's got some pseudo r squared values as well. Pretend r squared. I'd, if I'm going to report one of the two, I'd probably go for the McFadden r squared. A bit more, obviously, as you can see, it's more conservative. There is, of course, another way that we can assess model fit, and we can do that by comparing the AICs of our two models. So let's just go back for our summary of model one. Here's our AIC for model one. So I'll just put that there, a little hash. And let's get a summary for the null model. And there's our AIC for the null model as well. So as you can see, the AIC for model one, this one with the predictors in it, is substantially lower than the null model as well. So based on the AIC statistics as well, you can also say that our model is better. So we could write this up in which we report, say, um, the hypothesized model was a better fit than the null model. We can report the AICs and we can report our chi squared statistics, degrees of freedom, and p value for that. So we know the model fits. Let's just go back to our summary of model one. What about the individual predictors from our model? Well, like all regressions that we get now, it follows a pretty similar format. We've got our coefficients, we've got the intercept. And then our individual predictors. And we've got regression coefficients and the standard error, the z statistic, so the ratio. And then we've got our p values. So we can see in this case, we've got a significant effect of love of music. And that's a positive association, and it's highly significant. Age is non significant. Our uh, annoyingly gives a little point, meaning 0 0.01, but we ignore that. It's non significant. And no significant effects of sex either. And this is being female compared to being male in category categorized as one compared to zero. And here's our interceptor as well. So we can see we've got a significant effect of love of music, but no other significant effects. We could just write this up and then that's pretty much done. But what about the interpretation of these values? What we're doing in a classroom regression is basically a modeling log transformed true mean values of the DV. The intercept just means, so when all the IVs are zero, the log mean number of counts, so the log mean number of gigs is 0.949. So what we can do is exponentialize the statistics. So if we do that, that will tell us what the mean count is, essentially. Likewise, the regression coefficients, for example, let's look at love of music, are telling us what a one unit change in this has on the log mean of the DV. So this causes a 0.19 increase in the log mean of the dependent variable. Now, of course, what we can do is exponentialize these as well. If you exponentialize it, this will tell us each additional unit increase of our predictor how much that increases the mean count on the DV. And this exponentialized value is called the incidence risk ratio. And I'll show you how to compute all of those. Just one thing to briefly show you before we go into the IRRs is what about confidence intervals as well. Confidence intervals command, and we just ask for model one. The default is 
we run that, there's our confidence intervals for our effect. Um, it computes a profile likelihood. I think it's because the mass package is installed in my computer. It will all, it always says that. So there's the confidence intervals for our regression coefficients. So what about creating our IRRs? So what about exponentializing all these variables? Well, it's really straightforward to do. You type X to exponentialize the coefficients from model one. And there we go. Here are our exponentialized regression coefficients from our model. Now, of course, what we can also do is get the confidence intervals for the exponentialized regression coefficients. We just ask R to exponentialize them. And then we click run. And these are the exponentialized confidence intervals as well for our effects that we found in the model. We can write these effects up. So we just want to recompose our IRR along with its confidence intervals and the p-value. We can, of course, just produce the regression model as well if we wanted to. One more thing I will show you, which the JTools package will do for us, is create a table for us. So we type sjplot, colon, colon, tab model, and we're tabbing model one. We're going to get it to show the intercept. We're not going to get to show the standard errors, the DV label, which is the, our um, label of our table. Auto label, it's going to take our labels. And then I'm just leaving all these other factors, all these other items into class correlations, our squint. So I'm just going to leave them all false. I want a straightforward table with our variables shown. And we just click run. And then it produces predictors of gigs attended, incidence rate ratios. The intercept are incidence rate, rate ratios for sex, age, and love of music. Confidence intervals for it and p-values. And you'll note that these numbers are exactly the same as the ones that I computed using those commands by hand. So you can use, use this as well. This sjplot tab model command does a lot of things. It's not the place for me to go through all the different things that you can do with it. However, if you do use this code, it will produce you that relatively simple output if you wish. So there's going to be some more videos on count models, and particularly we're going to do some zero inflated models, some negative binomial models, comparing models, and so on a little bit down the line.